Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. Every week, right here, you meet generous people who honestly reflect on their experiences as small business owners. These people are the job generators, the wealth creators, and we call them the new American heroes. When you take time to study people like David Arnold, you learn how to start, run, and grow a business. Like me, David is the child of a Baptist minister. He learned from his parents that hard work is good. He's a hero to us because he employs 65 people in this company he started from the trunk of his car. Here's David Arnold, new American hero. David Arnold's business, SMI Inc., is located in Austin, Texas. It employs over 65 people and will do over 50 million in sales. They are the sole importer of Seiko's Loris watches. David tells how family members introduced him to the watch business. My dear grandmother uh, stopped one day and there was a sailor on the side of the road and uh, had a Bible under his arm. And she stopped and picked this man up and said I'd give him a lift to church. And so this man uh, became a family friend over the years. His name was Dean Wilson. In the 70s, he became a uh, Timex regional sales rep. So his grandmother started selling watches, and then his mother did. David sold watches part-time while in college, then took a job as a high school football coach. But eventually, he came back to watches. My wife and I, prior to us having kids, we decided we'd just literally sell watches on the weekends and the evenings and whatnot. And so we started all over again around Victoria, Texas, selling watches to local drugstores. On October 1st, 1981, I loaded watches in my car and was full-time in the watch business. And literally, at this time, it was all Timex watches. I drove down to the border of Texas, where, which was a hotbed for watches. You could sell them quite easily down there. <laughs> and. Um, and, and I really did this for the next two or three years. Um, had watches in my car. My excess inventory was in my closet at home. I want to try to understand that. How do you convince someone like Seiko to make you their U.S. distributor? It took a few years. <laughs> uh, we, Loris came into the United States. Loris is a division of Seiko Corporation. Loris decided in the oh, mid-80s that they wanted to get into the, the moderate-priced watch business. And because over the years I had done quite well in the Timex business, we were offered the Loris distributorship. And to be honest with you, I never really wanted to do it, but there, this man named Dean Wilson, who again was the family friend that got us started the in it. same guy that was hitchhiking. The same guy that was hitchhiking. He still worked for Timex during those days. And he was had been a very uh, good business counselor to me. I would really never done anything without his advice. And he told me, that David, you will never be able to buy as many Timex watches as you'll be able to sell. You need to take on my competition. It's interesting because don't we all need mentors, advisors, people who've got a longer view than we do? Absolutely. Why, what made you so unique that you all were grabbing the business? I developed a real strong customer base with some very loyal customers. Uh, we went after a specific market. We didn't try to be everything to everybody. We tried to be what we were good at and to the customers that we could service real well. So we really didn't overextend ourselves and try to do something that we really weren't capable of Did at the time. Did you go after Walmart then? No, never okay. talked to Walmart in those early first few years okay. because I couldn't handle them. I just focused on some regional accounts that, that I felt that we could be real successful with. And because of that, we got enough of those that we became in the early years, uh, I, I believe, we brought in more Loris watches in the United States than any of the other uh, nine distributors. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the retail industry changed a great deal. Absolutely. I had become a little bit disillusioned, mainly because we could sell a lot of watches. That wasn't the problem, but making a good profit or a profit literally off the watches was a very difficult situation. 
And I went to Seiko at the time and told them that, you know, we could sell a lot of watches, but I'm not making any money at this. I so you open your books? You said, <coughs> here, here, oh, yes, here, guys, we gave these them are the numbers. They decided that the multiple importer program did not work anymore and that they would go with just one. And so they asked us to become the single importer. My management here and a lot of the, the other people in the company are people I've known for a long time. When I first got started when the, in the import business, when Seiko came to us and said to become an importer, I uh, called up a friend of mine who I'd known and gone to high school with, Sterling Woody, and I said, Sterling, you've got to come help me. He is a salesperson, and he needed someone to run the business side. So we said we complement each other real well. Why don't, if you do the sales, let me do everything else. Patty, over here we have our consumer warranty area. Dusty Miller's was my next door neighbor. And uh, whenever a consumer buys one of our watches from the retailer in the United States, they, if they have any problems with it, they send it back here to us. We watched football games and played Little League together, and then finally I said, Dusty, I need your help. Just a sampling of the accolades our people have gotten. They have done an excellent job. We've shortened the turnaround time on consumer warranties from six months to two weeks here. Since they took over this responsibility, customers are getting faster response. A lot of the retailers are demanding EDI hookups, which is electronic data interchange. And Seiko we were says, very, very that's good what we that. want. We want a, we want a company correct. like yours who's already on the front end. That's correct. Our distribution systems are, were as good as anybody. Our customers were very happy with us. Mm -hmm. Every retailer is, uh, they operate very lean. Mm -hmm. They like um, just in time. Just in time inventory. They like the product tagged. They don't like a lot of people in their stores touching their watches. It's very automated. Errors break down their system. Errors cost them money. They don't have room for that. They don't have time nor the money for that. So they want a very good support system. So, so if you're a small business, this is for anybody. Doesn't matter what. If you're a small business delivering a product, you better give it to them when they want it, how they want it. That's correct. That's correct. And no excuses. No excuses. Well, I'm too small. No excuses. You know, you want this quality product, you got to put up with my problems. You're going to play with the big boys, you have to play their way. Technology is changing so rapidly that if we're not on the edge of technology, then, then we're going to get left behind. Mm -hmm. We could not be where we are today if we weren't on EDI. We're doing roughly 250,000 orders a year. 97% uh, of them are electronic. We send all of our orders via the internet. We send them purchases via the internet. We send projections on the internet and are from the AS400. So this information is out here. All this is done electronically. And this is the uh, magic boxes. SMI's relationship with a third-party software provider guarantees that Sterling can sleep at night. They provide 24 by 7 connectivity service and support. They said, well, one of the things that we do to provide uh, better customer support is we want a direct line to every one of our customers. So if you need help with them, you're instantly on the same line together. Correct. All of this used to be done with papers. We used to take orders people a long time ago, they'd mail them in. Then they got to, became technologically ahead with a fax. Well, we, we, we still take faxes and we'll take an order, but 90% of our orders are now paperless. Mm -hmm. Then what we do with that is we send back to them a confirmation that we received it mm -hmm. via the, the it's, it's paperless. We send them an event ship notice of what we're gonna send, mm -hmm. an ASN. We even invoice. We don't send paper invoices anymore. They're all electronic invoices. And we are now working with customers that they pay us electronically. I was going to say, can you get their money from their bank get, via your little electronic DI? I mean, just, DI? We just brought our first customer on doing that. And, it, and it, 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 the savings has been phenomenal. We had a customer that would send us a check, a remittance, that would be over 100 pages long because we sent them invoices. Now that's all done electronically and it's matched. And it can be posted to their account in a matter of minutes or hours versus days or weeks. So it's very, this is very, and we also get information, the customers share with us the sell-through information, which is absolutely critical for our business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We know what's not only selling to our customers, but to the ultimate customer who is the consumer. Doing business with big business will always require those of us who are small to have big technology. And today, it's cheap. Walmart, Kmart, and Target all require EDI. Loris or Seiko Corporation actually owns a license to sell Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, and we use those on watches only. That is our license. 
Uh, Lewis Hageman is our illustrator and display person. And what he does is he makes packaging for the uh, customers. The way the warehouse clubs work, they want the product brought in on a pallet, by a forklift truck, put on the floor, and then sold from that place. They just pull this off. Then as the trays empty out, they can just pull another tray off and use the pallet. And when it's fully, when it's finished and fully used up, they just bring another whole pallet in, set it in the middle of the floor. And as you saw there, it's, it's developing types of ways of selling the product for each specific customer. And in fact, right here, we have um, the beginning of a promotion that we're gonna be doing with J.C. Penney and what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a little bit of excitement at the retail level so the consumer sees us rather than our competition. And we need this pose and uh, the artwork has been requested by She's the so uh, manufacturer. Rob is, is an aficionado when it comes to being able to know which character, which pose, and what you can use in what watch. Any artwork, any packaging, any anything mm -hmm. has to have Disney's approval. And that became very difficult for Seiko to do working from Japan into the United States. And so one of the things that when they went to one importer that they approached us with is they want us to handle the Disney relationship. And along the way, we became designing our own watches. What happened was is we found that obviously we listen to our customers when we go to any of our, our national customers. We deal with them, and so we know what's selling on a day. One of the, the, the communications, the, the, the aspects that we have is that every week I can look at a sales report and see what sold at retail. Not what I sold into my customer, but what the customer sold, what a Walmart or any of my mass merchandisers sold to their customer. Some of our customers, on a daily basis, we can determine what store sold what watches on a daily basis. And so I know what's selling and what's not selling. And as a result, we started designing the watches. We started having all the concepts and ideas. And Seiko finally said, why don't you guys design the watches? We built a good, fundamental, solid system that had a value to the retailers that we dealt with. They could come in here and see how you do business and feel confident. Absolutely. In fact, we bring we try to bring our customers as many as we can to bring our to see our building, our facilities, to show them how proficient we are in what we do. Well, what you're watching here is the machine called the Tagger Sorter, and when we get, receive an order from the salespeople. Um, it can come, we can have up to 10 different uh, stores on one particular order. The machine will automatically read the barcode on the watch. And then the chutes are, represent a store, there's a box for each store? That's correct. It also um, helps our mistakes, so if there was a, a watch that was pulled incorrectly, it wouldn't read that particular watch, it would run it off the end of, on, end, the, end of the machine, mm -hmm. and we could go so back So therefore, and... you don't send your customer the wrong stuff. That's correct. <laughs> Jogging, shooting baskets, and lifting weights are all part of the routine at SMI. Then of course, you've got the valuable benefits package of an on-site weightlifting space. Well, that's... <laughs> Obviously, that's something I need to take more. Of, yeah, I know there's a lot of muscles around here. I don't I, know if they used to play football for you. No, 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 not at all. But we have some very uh, health-conscious individuals here, and, and uh, I think you can tell it by looking at some of them. I try to keep up with them, but it's very difficult. Now, are you saying that people that play together work better together? Absolutely. Great. One big happy family. Did David ask you how much weight you could press and how many, how many barbells you could pick up before you came to work here? No, because he knew I could always do more than he could. <laughs> <laughs> how much weight did you put on here? It's only 100 pounds. Let's see. There you we go. So, down okay. So, <laughs> I'm under so, here. so you hired people that are stronger than you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and smarter. And smarter. Oh, no, no, it's, stronger, get to that part. it's the truth really be no, no. and smarter. We did and have a lift hair. off one day and I won. That's not correct. I tied you. <laughs> okay, he tied. Okay. <laughs> okay, I wasn't finished with that. So you hired people who are stronger than you. Right. Well, they're trying to get as strong as I am. Okay, so they're, you they're hired getting people there. that are smarter than you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But not as strong as I am, but much smarter than I am. <laughs> David. So, I think what people look for as much as for the money is for a good quality environment to work at. People want to be happy. Right. People don't like to be miserable eight and no. ten hours a so day. So what does that mean? What is a good quality environment to work in? How do you define that? 
I don't look over people's shoulders very much. We tell them what to expect so of them. So they're free. They're free to do their deal. They're free. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't uh, monitor telephone calls. I don't. Occasionally, people will. I, I, t I have one rule. I have one rule that I've always gone by, and I tell everybody when they come to work here: is don't ever take advantage of me. Mm. You take advantage of me, we got a problem. You work with me, we'll never have a problem. There's been a few people that have taken advantage of me over the years, but I can say that 99% of them understand what I mean by don't take advantage of. If somebody has a family problem, they need to take care of it. They I'll, go do it. They go do it. They don't have to ask. They, they just have to let, them, let us know where they're going to. If they have a, a child that's sick and they need to go home and take care of them or check them on the phone, that's fine. I don't monitor their phone calls. I don't monitor... You know, all they have to do is notify their supervisor, and I, it's pretty much a no questions asked policy. But don't cross the line. Right. Don't take advantage right. of me. David has never tried to hit a home run. He simply wants to advance himself slowly and carefully around the bases and is happy if it takes time to score. This strategy has paid off because as he competed with other watch distributors, he went after small and medium-sized accounts, not the big guys. This gave him cash flow and time to put the building blocks of a strong company in place. When it came time for Seiko to limit its number of distributors, David always made the cut because he delivered the sales and the service, which can only be done by a team which he built carefully over time. Dolly Parton said, it only took me 25 years to become an overnight success. David is the sole importer of Loris because he took his time to do things right. He never tried to hit a home run and never expected to score big without putting in years of focused effort. Slow down, step back, think, plan, find people to work with you. You don't have to hit a home run, just keep moving in the right direction. The business community loves our show. One owner says, you're motivating, informative, and inspiring. Another calls us insightful. One says, it does my soul good. Another thinks we are the true reality show. And we're called the best business educational show on television. Want to learn more? Join the thousands of small business owners who are making a difference and add your voice to our story. Visit us online at smallbusinessschool.org. Give us some advice about small business owners and why we should not be afraid to deal with the world. Right. Actually, the keys to the King Company and where we are today as being the exclusive Loris import in the United States is a very good model for what a partnership between um, a vendor and manufacturer and another country and what they can put together in the United States. We work very, very closely together. We have <coughs> learned to understand each other very, very well. What Even did you have to learn to understand? What, what surprised you? What did you say, oh my gosh, I didn't know I had to do that? One of the stories, I even like to tell them this today, and, and a lot of these Japanese that I still, you know, they still remember this, I get over on the table, I'm very nervous. <clears throat> There's 11 Japanese, they all handed me formally their business card. I, I don't even think I had enough business cards to pass them all out. And uh, I gave them my card and I just started talking. The only thing I knew how to do, they asked a question, I talked. And I, I could see this puzzled look on all of their faces as, as I'm talking. And I finally, I just stopped and I said, do y'all understand? And almost to a one, they shook their head no. They had no idea what I was saying because I was speaking real fast, speaking in Texas slang, and I, find, I realized, I said, I had to slow down, I have to use literal English words, and I learned to do that, and, and, and that's worked out real well. Ted Ishimaru, Seiko Liaison, offices at SMI, and closes the language gap. Not because he cannot write or uh, communicate, but he just, just wanted to make sure that uh, that people in Tokyo understand the way he understands himself because uh, it's not always the same. Because of the language barrier, Japanese are the best listeners in the world. If you talk to them, they under and literally, they'll understand what you say. They have to listen because of the translation. And so it's made me learn to be a better listener. <clears throat> a key to our relationship really now is I understand them and they understand me. The biggest thing we can do is always learn. And don't be afraid of, the, of global business. Don't be afraid of global business. The, the, the world's a small place now. When I started this business driving around in my car, my 
area in my market was very small. But what I found today is that with the consolidation of the retail industry, and the bigger guys getting bigger, the smaller getting smaller, it's a small world. You can hop on a plane and be anywhere within three to three and a half hours right now. I can hop on a plane today and be in Tokyo in 12 hours. You know, you've got Seiko, you've got Disney, you've got Walmart. And I've got I to mean, balance all three. That yeah, is correct. And I at mean, the same time, keep the small company image that, quite frankly, that I want. We are a buffer between a lot of major companies, large corporate companies. And I think that's, that's worked to our benefit is because we are smaller, we are a little more flexible, we are a little more diversified. I mean, we can do things that maybe a, uh, a large company may have a harder time doing. Uh, you know, what advice would you give someone? Find a good plan. I mean, first of all, you got to have a product that's marketable. I found a niche in the watch business in the in the 70s and early 80s that was, quite frankly, underdeveloped. Uh, I think if I were to do the same thing today, it would be very difficult. You wouldn't do watches today. It'd be tough. You do something else. It, but I'd the big idea something. is find idea, something. I find a niche that's marketable. Find something that's marketable. Find the right niche. The second thing is develop relationships with customers because after you're in it a while your reputation gets out in front of you and really what it boils down to is that the company means a lot to the people it's not just the weekly or the monthly paycheck the company means something the success of the company I've always felt that if you're successful in what you do the rest of it will take care of itself the profitability will take care of itself and quite frankly I've proved that that that, that system works mm -hmm. I've just tried to be successful and as a result, the money, you know, the financing success and stuff. Success mean deliver for the customer? Success, success means, means deliver. do it right? Success, success means, means quality? Right. Success, success means? means all of those things. What jazzes you up? Why did you want to have your own thing? Oh, what, what is it? I, I very much love a challenge, I guess, number one. I love, to, I love uh, uh, somebody tells me I can't climb that hill to show them that I can climb that hill. What's the hardest part about being a leader? being optimistic every day. I mean, there's so many things that drag you down on a day-to-day -day basis, but you know, you gotta put all that behind you and say, I can overcome that challenge. Being a, a business owner where you're your own boss is not um, s fun all the time. And my wife will even tell you that it hasn't been all that you know, much fun to her sometimes, but when you look at it from a big picture and you say, man, I grew this much and went this far, and, and when we have a company picnic and all the employees bring their families and you say all these are here, these people are here and all of them are, are, are enjoying their life and a lot of it I'm responsible for, it makes you feel good. When there's a mistake happens, it's my fault. And I've, I've, I, sometimes, I, you know, it is my fault even though I might not have had a lot to do with it. When sales aren't up to speed like I wanted to, I'm the one that has to answer to my financial people or to the bankers. I'm the one that has to tell Seiko that things weren't as good as maybe we had expected them to be. And so, yes, the buck stops here. It's my responsibility. That's hard. That's tough. And I think maybe that's one of the reasons we've been successful. I've been willing to own up to every mistake that we've made. I, I, I'm, I'm very fast to say, you know, yeah, that's what happened. I'll own up to it. But you know what? I'm not going to let it happen again. And very rarely does it ever happen again. I have never in my relationship with Seiko, not been totally honest with them, not been willing to lay out, open the things up and say, here's what it is. Here's, you so know, don't here's, the, here's the story. Don't, don't pretend. It. Don't pretend. You know, you, you can tell them the problem, but show them how you're going to fix it. David, what about the future? Oh, the future, uh, I can assure you, will be just as rocky as the last 15 years. <laughs> you know, I am, I'm not so much you're of not an optimist. You're not looking for a smooth road? I'm not looking for a smooth road. I'm not looking for a smooth road. Whenever you reach the next level, the next level sitting there in front of you. I don't think there is an end. The most exciting thing is for, is for me is that I can look back and remember that first day in 1981 when I put the watches in the trunk of my car and I took out to go sell watches. And then today when I walk into this building and I look out and I see all these watches that would no longer fit in the trunk of my station wagon. That's been fun. That's been exciting. But when you look at it from the big picture and you say, how have I been successful, you can say, this has really worked. You know, what I built is something that's really big and very solid and very strong and, and hopefully will be for many, many years to come. SSL, PGP, SET, Extranet, Intranet. 
firewalls. It's all the language of e-commerce. And you can learn more about it by coming to our website, smallbusinessschool.org, and clicking on Resources. What are you waiting for? Remember, you don't have to hit a home run. Build a strong company by advancing carefully in the right direction. See you next time. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.